Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my reviews today as you can already tell we are going to take a closer look at the second generation BMW X2 and boy do I have a lot to tell you because a lot has changed on the baby SUV BMW created almost eight years ago and I still remember the fact that when the, this car was originally launched it was supposed to be an SUV coupe version of the very popular X1 crossover well it didn't really do that well in terms of sales um, and I could totally understand why I didn't really like the first generation because it was incredibly small uh, I still remember driving it and sitting alongside the Volkswagen Passat all track at the stoplight and the all track driver was almost taller than me sitting a bit higher so what's the point of having a crossover if you're gonna be sitting so low and you have such a low ground clearance well BMW decided to change all of that and for the new generation this one they did a lot of work now the car still uses the same UKL platform underneath it all it's a front wheel drive platform that's been used by the BMW X1 for quite some time now it has been used by the Mini Countryman and it has been used by other Mini models for a long, long time, as well as the BMW 1 Series and the 2 Series Grand Coupe. Now, this platform allows BMW to offer a lot of room inside and we're going to see just how much that changed on the new model because the, BM, the original BMW X2 didn't do that well in this regard. But just taking a look at the car and just how much space it occupies in this parking lot, you can pretty clearly see that this car did grow a lot in all directions mainly in terms of length this one is 19.4 centimeters longer than the original BMW X2 it's also two centimeters wider and six centimeters taller yes it grew a lot and we have a 20.7 centimeter ground clearance on this car which basically allows it to cover very interesting surfaces but this is not going to be a car used for off-roading. This is a car that's going to be used around town. And most people I'm willing to bet will never even get the all-wheel drive system. As a matter of fact, right now, there are only two cars in the range that can be had with all-wheel drive. Uh, and one of them is the M35 top of the range model. But other than that, getting all-wheel drive on the BMW X2 is a bit of a trip we're going to talk about that later on now in terms of design as you can probably tell the front end is completely new and I have to say you really have to see this car in person to get a better grasp of how it of what it looks like and how the design was changed because if you're going to judge it by the photos alone you're going to have an skewed view of it because Personally, I found it to be quite ugly when I first saw it in pictures, but now that I've been driv driving it and seeing it in real life, I think it actually looks pretty good. It's a huge change from the original, so we have a almost hexagonal uh, grille up front that does resemble the one on the BMW XM a lot. We have headlamps that extend to the sides, just like we've seen on the 5 Series and before that on the E65 Series almost 17 years ago. So. We do have some familiar shapes over here and we do have for the first time ever what BMW closed BMW Iconic Glow. That is a system that actually highlights the surrounds around uh, the, the front grille and lights them up at night. And it actually looks pretty good. Now from the sides, as I already told you, the car did grow a lot and you have to ignore these 18 inch wheels, winter beaters. Um, the car actually came with 21 inch wheels, but since it's winter time, um, we had to fit the winter tires, which are 18 inches. But you can get up to 21 inches in terms of diameter for this uh, car um, in the wheel department. So yeah, it's pretty long. We have flush door handles over here and the color from on this car is called fire red It's a brand new color for BMW. We also have the M Sport Pro package installed on it, which brings all these black Trims all around it. It used to be called shadow line. Then that includes actually the insides of the headlamps and that really creates an interesting contrast and I think it's worth the money it also brings a huge spoiler at the back a huge wing on top of the tailgate that actually looks pretty good and that also includes a huge bumper 
uh, at the back with black accent and uh, a diffuser in the middle but what we've lost on the bmw x2 is a set of real tailpipes the cars don't really have it anymore unless you get the m35i you don't get exhaust tailpipes they are hidden uh, behind the rear bumper since we're talking about the rear i actually like it a lot it has very sculpted hips around the back and it has a huge boot 560 liters which is a huge increase compared to the old model and yeah overall i think it looks really good uh, but you really have to see it in person now let's hop inside and see what changed in there well now that we have to behind the wheel of the bmw x2 the new bmw x2 let's talk about what changed well basically everything but the increase in size on the outside is rather obviously reflected on the inside as well whereas the old model was rather cramped inside especially if you were around six feet tall the new one doesn't really suffer from those issues i was actually quite surprised to see just how roomy it feels and is of course this panoramic sunroof does help out a lot because it brings in a lot of light and it accentuates the uh, feeling of spaciousness but even so with a almost 2.7 meter long wheelbase this car offers a lot more room inside than the old model and if you want to sit six feet tall adults in the back you can easily do that i fit behind um, the driver's seat with the driver's seat adjusted in my comfortable driving position i'm six feet tall roughly 250 pounds and you can carry four adults like me for longer trips easier that's one of the advantages a front wheel drive platform has because the engine under the hood is mounted transversely and it can be pushed further up front um, loosening up a lot of room over here inside in terms of design you can tell this is basically a bmw x1 so it looks exa uh, exactly the same as the BMW X1. It has the same features and the same uh, curved display in here with two the separate um, um, screens. Now, now what you're probably uh, very curious about is the build quality and the feeling of the materials. Well, it will depend a lot on how you spec your car. What you're seeing here is a fully optioned car and it has a price that definitely reflects that over 60,000 euros um, but at least in this spec you do get a lot of interesting things for example the dashboard is covered in Sensatec which is a sort of faux leather that BMW has been using for a long time and it does feel very good to the touch the same material can be found on the top layers of the door cards whereas leather vernasca leather in this case is being used throughout the rest of the cabin so on the middle side of the door cards on the seats and i really appreciate the combination used on these seats we have white with gray um, color combos and it has ventilated seats and heated seats this car has ventilated and heated seats we have perforated leather and i actually like the orange stitching on these seats and it does feel like a premium car but i repeat myself it depends a lot on what you go for because there are a number of combinations available in standard trim you get textile uh, upholstery for the seats and everything inside the car we also have the m sport pro package as i already told you which brings this uh, beautiful in my book steering wheel but it did get a bit too thick for my liking i do like i do enjoy thick steering wheels but this one might be a bit too much even for my taste uh, now the biggest news regarding this car is by far the introduction of iDrive 9 uh, bmw operating system 9 now this is an evolution based on the iDrive 8 and 8.5 what a surprise but the changes are quite massive first of all what i did notice is that this moves very fast uh, and unlike the 8.5 now the difference between the 8 and the 8.5 was that the 8.5 had a shortcut menu over here and it rearranged a number of tiles of vertical tiles right so the 8.5 was the least ergonomic one of them uh, the 8.5 the 8 was the least ergonomic model 
Uh, the 8.5 did change a few things for uh, added a couple of shortcuts over here and this vertical widget to the side, which we still have on the iDrive 9 over here. But the iDrive 9 does bring a, a lot more to the table. So it is in even easier to use. We still have the shortcuts over here, but they are focused on what you're really using all the time. And we have what BMW calls Digital Premium. Digital Premium is a subscription service um, that offers you additional features inside the car. Uh, it also covers all the traffic your car will be using because you have an onboard 5G SIM on the car, but it basically brings things uh, at the fingertips of the driver. For example, the personal assistant has more features. It can connect to the internet and be a lot more useful and you can use um, free speech a lot easier. You have the connected store over here. I'm going to talk about that later on. We have games you can download from the store. You have features for the doors and the windows. You have um, features for the exterior lighting. The lights will have certain dances and you have three additional driving modes. Now in standard guys, you get three driving modes on every BMW X2. You have personal, sport and efficient. But if you get this digital premium option you can also get the expressive relax and digital art driving modes as well now getting back to this feature um it also brings apps at the top of your finger pin uh, at the reach of your um, uh, fingertips basically you can download apps regarding certain features for example you can download spotify and use the onboard sim to stream music you don't have to use your phone anymore right so you can use the app installed over here you, you can use tune in radio and listen to radio from around the world tidal and so on but you also have travel and local apps i mean they will depend the number of the apps will depend on the region you're in bmw is working on bringing more and more of them on board um, its cars you can download news and magazines um, streams um, of news uh, on board your car so it once again this will depend on the uh, region you're in you can stream videos in here as well and the most important one apparently is the gaming section you can download games on board the car and you can play them uh, from behind the wheel of course when you're stationary so quite a number of things but the most important one is the bmw connected drive upgrades which allows you to activate certain functions of the car using a subscription it's the scandal we've all heard about in the past where bmw actually wanted to do this for a long time and when people heard that they have to buy a subscription for their heated seats they actually uh, went berserk but think of it this way the cars come fitted by standard with a lot more kit than you paid for, right? And then by using these shops, you can activate certain functions for them. You can activate the adaptive lights, for example, ad adaptive LED lights, right? Um, and you can use them, let's say you'll be living in Sweden, northern Sweden, for three months during uh, the next winter. You can activate this function and it will help you out whenever you're living over there and then you can deactivate it and save yourself some money. The same goes for the heated seats. You don't use them during summertime. Why should you pay for them, right? So you can pay for them for like three months out of a year, use them and that's it. So it's quite interesting how BMW thought of this system. This car is fully optioned. Of course, you can still buy the options um the the standalone options if you want to so nobody is forcing you to go the subscription way um but you on this car we have every option take including the 360 degree cameras now it doesn't have the bmw drive recorder system installed so you can buy this one and you can actually use that function because the car already has the hardware on you just buy this bmw active drive recorder system and the car will be using the cameras on board um, just like you would use a regular dash cam. So that's the big idea with these subscription based uh, features. Now, if you don't like them, you can just skip over this part. Now, in terms of driving, let's talk about the driving and the uh, 
a technical platform underneath it all. As I already said, it uses a front wheel drive platform and the engine choices are rather limited uh, at first. Now, on the petrol side of things, we only have two choices. But as I said, this is just for the beginning of the production. More options will be offered in the future. Uh, but at first, you only get two uh, petrol options. You have the Big Daddy, the M35i, uh, which uses a two-liter four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine with 300 horsepower. And it is, of course, the fastest BMW X2 you can buy, doing zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.3 seconds. And then there's this one. This is the S-Drive 20i. S-Drive means this is a front-wheel drive car. It's not an X-Drive. So all the power goes to the front wheels. And 20i doesn't mean 2-liter 4-cylinder engine. It means 1.5 liters of displacement and a 3-cylinder engine under the hood. It's the famous B38 engine that has been introduced a while back. It has been upgraded for this new model and has been used by cars like the BMW i8, for example, for the first time. Uh, in this configuration, this B38 engine is making 156 horsepower uh, and 240 newton meters of torque by its own. But this is a mild hybrid car and um, the seven-speed dual clutch gearbox um, attached to this new engine uh, has an electric motor inside. That electric motor is good for 19 horsepower and uh, 55 newton meters of torque. So in total, the car can rely on up to 170 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. And this is actually the second fastest car you can buy right now with an internal combustion engine in the BMW X2 range um, because it has a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour sprint of uh, 8.3 seconds. There are two diesels in, available in the range as well. There's the um, S-Drive 18D, which is also a front-wheel drive car, but with a 2-liter 4-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine under the hood. And the same engine is used on the X-Drive 20. Um, uh, the X-Drive 20 has 163 um, horsepower, whereas the S-Drive uh, 18D has 150 horsepower but none of them are faster than the uh, s-drive 20i um, so what how does it drive well i have to say this is probably one of the best three cylinder engines i've ever driven i know it sounds like sacrilege to have this kind of engine on a car that's 62,000 euros in total but trust me 99 percent of the people driving this car won't even notice it is terribly well balanced and it feeds the power absolutely flawlessly. The gearbox does help out a lot in this regard and um, I actually enjoy it a lot. And uh, it feels quite agile off the line. And the sound it makes, well, it does remind me of a six cylinder. Now, this B38 engine is part of the modular B series engines. So basically what we're looking at over here is half of the iconic B58 engine. Uh, the B58 is one of the best engines BMW ever made, and this one is now not too shabby either. It also has the closed deck cooling system. Um, it has a variable geometry um, turbocharger, direct and indirect. It has a Miller fuel cycle, uh, and it works absolutely extraordinary. Now, being a mild hybrid should decrease the fuel consumption as well. Well, I didn't really see that. Around town, I saw an average fuel consumption of about eight, liter, eight liters per 100 kilometers covered. On a series of B roads, it dropped under six liters per 100 kilometers covered. And on the highway, it went up to 7.7. .7. So decent numbers. This car has the extended uh, fuel tank, uh, which gave me a range of about 750 kilometers with a, fuel, uh, with a full tank. So pretty good in my book but i what i appreciate the most is the elasticity of the internal combustion engine and the way the gearbox works it keeps you right there where you want it to be and we also have coasting as you can probably tell this right now uh, the internal combustion engine is turned off and we are coming it started back up again but uh, you can do a lot of coasting with the combustion engine turned 
off. So yeah, it's pretty nifty off the line. I actually like the suspension as well. Now the car was configured with 21 inch wheels, but on these 18 inch wheels, it feels very comfortable. Um, it is a um, McPherson setup at front and a Multilink setup at the back. So yeah, even on the X2, the BMW engineers fitted a independent suspension on the rear axle. It's quite comfortable. You can get adaptive suspension as well. We have it. So when I enter sport mode, the dampers will stiffen up and the car will become a lot more aggressive. And you can feel it in the, in the back of your head quite a lot. It does get a bit jittery in sport mode, uh, but otherwise it's quite comfortable and the suspension is well, well sound insulated. So no issues whatsoever in that regard. What I can complain about though, is the fact that the steering is numb, so you don't get any kind of feel. It's very light, so that will help out around town, but it is um, very numb. And uh, the, the, the acceleration pedal doesn't really have a lot of travel, so you get all of the power in the initial bite, 20% of the pedal travel. Uh, after that, nothing really happens. So it was set up this way to make the car feel a bit more agile, more powerful, but it, it's not tricking me. So I would, I would have preferred a car with a longer travel for the gas pedal. Now that said, to be honest, I really enjoy this car and I enjoyed driving it. I feel like it's a huge step up, literally, from the BMW X2. I feel like now the X2 has a fighting chance against its rival and now the X2 has its own personality and it feels like a complete car, a well done car as well. It's usable by four adults, it has a lot more room and it's quite enjoyable to drive. As for the pricing, well, it will depend on the market you're in. Over here, it starts from under 40,000 euros. But as I said, this fully optioned car has a price tag of over 60,000. It's a bit much, I can give you that, but you don't have to configure it this way. You can just tick the boxes you are interested in. Let me know what you think about the car in the comment section below. And until next time, don't forget to feed your passions. Ciao.